No fluff. No bullshit. Hey there, guys. This is I don't know what fucking episode of uh, the Bad Toro podcast. We got Jem in here. Jem is from Germany. Am I correct? You're from Germany, yes, right? Yes, born, correct. Born, raised in Germany. Uh, emigrated to Dubai last year for tax purposes. Fucking immigrants, uh, actually, man. Fucking immigrants. I hate you guys. You know, like you, you just go and steal other people's jobs and shit. <laughs> I fucking hate that. But anyway, Jem is from Germany. Right now, you're living where? Bali, is it? Or yeah, Thailand? Yeah. Or what is it? Some, Bali, some exotic. Bali, Bali. Yeah, I got my Indonesian residency on Monday, actually. So I have four residencies now. Shit, you sound like, <laughs> like a spy, bro. Like, what are you doing with this? Yeah, bro, you got to diversify. Same with bank accounts and everything. Can't, can't trust nobody. Can't <laughs> trust nobody, man. So hold on. So how let's 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 just fucking get into it. All right. I fucking love this <laughs> digital nomad uh lifestyle. So 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 how is fucking Bali? I, by the way, just like uh I want to say this, I really want to move my ass to Bali, and I'll probably gonna do like a two or three test run like this winter because everybody is just been telling me that Bali is the fucking place to be. So, what's your take on that? I agree. So first and foremost, you need to understand that Bali is a very spiritual island, right? It's not only work, it's it's like everything. You have everything here. You have party, you have forest, you have jungle, you have mountains. It's kind of like one place for, for everything, right? Indonesia has thousands of islands. Indonesia has what? I think 230 million people. So it's the fifth or sixth Whoa. biggest country in the world. Yeah, it's like huge, bro. I'm telling Shit. you. Never. I, I didn't know before. I didn't know that. But that's crazy. Yeah, it's it's super big. But essentially, the main place where the most things are happening right now is in Changu. So Changu is like the middle spot, main spot, like hippie spot, whatever you want to call it. But you have everything there. You have everything from restaurants to clubs to everything. And then there's like this more jungle area, which is Ubud or Uluwatu. Um, more jungle, I've heard, I've heard more, of Ubud, more yeah. nature. Right. Yeah, more cliffs and everything. A friend of mine, we're going to go there on Saturday, actually. has like, a, So you got a spot for 20 years because in Indonesia, unless you have a, a company in Indonesia or, or like some certain setup with an Indonesian who's taking part of the company, which I have, uh, you can't buy land. You can, you can rent land for like 10 years, 20 years, five years, 50 years, whatever it is. Um, but you can't buy it, right? So you can rent essentially for 20 years. So he's done that. 20, 30 years. And he has a super sick spot at uh, at Bingen Beach, it's called. So it's in Uluwatu. And you see like all of the cliffs and everything. And one time we were there, uh, ate some chocolate. And I don't know if you've seen it on my Instagram, but then we went to the beach. Uh, and then, you know, the chocolate tasted very good. And after like 10 or 20 minutes, uh, so we had fresh coconuts. So he put po coconuts in his backpack, right? Uh, okay. We took them. He took like a knife and everything. We like he took out the coconuts when we were at the beach and everything. So like super chill because there is nothing on the beach, like super empty. And then the monkey started to climb down the mountains and stole our oh, shit and attacked us. Freaky, freaky. And like we, bro, we mushrooms, showed him everything. Bro, that was like wow. Yeah. All it right, goes, so 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 crazy. hold on. So so Indonesia is like a lot more uh, a, a mushroom place than a fucking coke and ecstasy place, right? Like this is as in spiritual and shit. It's like something that you go to get in touch with nature. I mean, drugs wise, because it's important. You know, like we we got to be prepared for that shit whenever we get there. I mean, quite honestly, you can get. Here's the thing. I'm going to be very careful of, of what I'm going to say because I don't know who's going to watch this, right? Well, um, I hope your parents so, are not. So, you know, we'll try. No, that's, that's, we'll put, that's we'll put an IP, IP block on the house that you grew up, grew up with, you know, in. So they it's, don't fucking get it. It's more like regulatory regular stuff. Um, you can buy things such as ketamine in the pharmacy in liquid okay. form. In liquid form, it's legal. If you start cooking it and it's powder or like crystallizing, it's illegal, right? The, the entire island is pretty much on K. Everyone is taking, like, so many people are taking drugs. Like, I've never, by the way, I've never, I've never had that. I've never had ketamine. I, I'm a little bit scared because I've heard a lot of stories about these fucking K holes and shit. And but that's I'm, if you take a fuck ton, like, then you're it? like starting to be paralyzed and you need to take a fuck ton for that and, or like be in the wrong mindset. It's, it's always like that, especially if you, like when people talk about a bad trip, you have a bad trip either because there was some weird shit inside 
or you're not prepared mentally for what's about to come because you know that your mind is going to altercate and change once you're taking something and you need to know, okay, the state that I'm currently in is totally normal. It's totally fine. And you, you can't do anything about it for whatever, like if we're talking about chocolate and everything, it's going to be but, like the next four five, six hours. Right. Yeah. But hold on, bro. You remember we were in fucking Kiev together, whatever we met. Remember fucking uh, Jordan and fucking Christo <laughs> and, and a few other guys? They got so fucked up over that K shit that, you know, that's why I don't think it was K. I, I saw I don't that. think it was K. I, yeah, probably. But I saw it and it was supposed to be K. I was like, fuck, I don't want to be ever in that fucking position that these guys are in, you know? Yeah. Like they couldn't fucking talk. It was like, uh, uh, uh. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> you know? So, so yeah. But. Hold on, one more thing that I uh, I wanted to fucking ask you, and it just fucking slipped my head right now. Whenever we were talking, but anyway, fuck it. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> Bali is the place to be. Apparently, it looks sick. It looks amazing. How do you cope with like the work that you do and like the time difference? Because this is what I've I've already I've already put it down here in the office. I was like, guys, I'm going for two or three months in fucking Bali this winter winter you got to deal with that so and everybody's like oh but the time difference and we can't really rely on you and we can't really work with you so how is that like how how do you cope to work with everybody else yeah it's it's a great question i think first and foremost it's important to clarify what kind of business we run um and where the entire team is based right so the main thing the main business the first thing that i pretty much started was my google ads agency adcubator where 23 media bars are in-house and they're all in germany so the only communication that we have is in slack and two weekly calls monday and friday right that's the only thing so six hours is not too bad and at the end of the day they have their job and i'm just I'm, i'm not responsible for micromanaging but i'm right. just responsible for taking care of that nothing burns and if something burns that i'm going to take care of it and you know because The media buyers and my team, they're communicating with the, with their respective clients on their own, right? And at the end of the day, I still have, have an executive assistant who's in, in all of that stuff. And if something burns, she's going to take care of it. If I can, for example, because she's in Germany. She's like in, in that area. She's traveling a lot, actually. She has a good life. Uh, but yeah, then if we're talking about the education company, so Info, Ecom, Ecom Incubator, um, my business partner is in Edmonton. I've never seen him once. And actually, like two, two hours ago, I forced him to book a flight to Germany in one week. So I'm going to see him for the first time there. What? And, and he's your partner? Yeah, for, for a company. We have a 50-50 split. It's great. But, but it's... you've never fucking seen each other? No. Fuck me. In person. 21st fucking century, man. How the fuck do you become a partner with a guy that you never seen before? That's so crazy, man. Like, I love it. I love it. Trust me. Like, yeah. to me, this is so new. But if I don't get to you know, sit on a table and, you know, get drunk with the motherfucker or like experience him, like what kind of guy he is. How the fuck can I be a partner with him? But you guys are young. You guys get uh, get that sorted out a lot better than us, I guess. So you, you've had no yeah. problems with him. The business is going well. How long have you been partners for? For a bit more than one year. We started the business August 13th last year. Um, and it's doing good. It's doing like mid seven figures annually. Not quite mid seven figures, but like three mil a year right now. Like we right. pretty much cleared that much in the first year, which is wow. amazing. Getting our getting getting another click funnels award. Um, I don't want to send the videos and everything. The B roll, it's like uh, fucking cringe. Like I don't want to do that shit, but like I have to because <laughs> uh, because all of the other awards like Zipify and, and, and click funnels are in Germany, and I'm probably just gonna fucking put them into storage or throw them away. Because like, bro, what the fuck am I supposed to do with all of that shit? Like take it to Bali? Like no, because yeah. I'm 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 not in Germany anymore. Um, I still have something like a storage. Let's call it something like a storage because officials right. might be watching this. Um, and I need to clear that respective space where my things are inside and then put it into an actual storage and get bank lockers and everything. Because yesterday I signed off on, on all of my taxes for 2020. Um, and there was like another bump of 130K that I have to pay additionally, which was like, oh, whatever, you know, I, Not, not really nice because a friend of mine got got a got an R8 a few months ago, and I was like, damn, I could have could have could have got one of them motherfuckers, right? Yeah, but you don't want to drive these in Bali, bro. In oh, Bali, no, everyone no. drives a scooter. Yeah, there's I've like heard two, that. three I've people. There are like people who drive a Lambo or a Ferrari here, and they're like fucking douchebags. Like, what the fuck do you want to do in 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 Bali with a supercar where everyone is driving a scooter? And 
it's, probably, it's crazy. But you can probably get away with like a, a, a G wagon, like uh, so that stuff because you can take it off road, I guess, if you want to be that fucking flashy. But you know, Bali is the place where you, you could you, you could just go in your fucking uh, shorts and three t shirts and a pair of flip flops all year. That's that's the way I see it. You know, no, no need to fucking show off there. There's places to show off at. You know, you go to Dubai. Obviously, you know, that's where that's yeah. where you do that shit. So hold on. Yeah. While we're on the subject of being flashy, I've never heard a single good word about fucking chicks in Bali. Like the I mean the local chicks. There's apparently like ones that that you know, like tourists and stuff that come out over from all over the world, but the what are the locals like? I mean it depends if you if you like if you like Asian chicks, I guess they're not really my type. Um, I I don't know why, yeah. but I have, a, I have a thing for German girls. I don't know why. It's not oh, like man. I only date German girls or something. Like I, you know, whenever I find a woman attractive, of course I'm I'm, I'm gonna go out with her and stuff. But uh, I'm not saying I don't like Asian girls, but I'm I'm not an Indonesian guy. I have to say. Right, right. Well, that's that's what I've heard most of the time. But anyway, by the way. German girls, because uh, me coming from Bulgaria, the first porn that we were actually exposed to here in Bulgaria was German porn. And uh, it was very, very traumatic at the time, man, because like uh, girls in Germany in the 80s, uh, you know, hadn't uh, found out that they can shave their, you know, privates in their armpits and shit. And there was like some gruesome shit going on, man. I was traumatized after I first watched like a German porno. I was like, fuck me. You got to fuck these girls. Oh, my God, that's crazy. So uh, but, you know, there's another thing about Germany that I want to talk to you about. Like Germany seems to be and Germans in particular. You guys are so fucking freaky when it comes to sex and shit. There's the, all these like uh, sex shops all over fucking Germany. It's like a, a supermarket. They're like corner shops. You know, you get in there, you get yeah. all these huge fucking dildos hanging on the walls. And there's like these men that are like. 70 year old like checking out dildos and shit like you know like like they're just on the market looking at cucumbers and tomatoes you know it's like it's it's always be like very crazy because we are so like sex is such a fucking taboo all over like i guess eastern europe and the balkans in particular that you know like just talking about it you, you start flushing and then you go to germany you got a, a normally dressed man which is like 65 going in there checking out dildos, looking at crazy ass uh, DVDs that have like, uh, you know, Harry Punani 95, some sort of shit like that on it, you know? And it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. Like, how, how the fuck does that work? And plus you got those, all those uh, FKK fucking sauna clubs. Oh my God. This is, this is revolutionary. Like this should be the fucking standard for these things. Like, how come nobody ever, nobody else does it? It's like Germans and Austrians. How does that happen? Okay, here's the thing. It's it's not only German and Austrians. It's also Netherlands. It's really hard in Netherlands. It's really hard in Spain. If you go to Barcelona, which we've just been like what six weeks ago. Six weeks um, ago, yeah. I never saw. Yeah, I, I've, I've never. I've never. Let me say, I've never seen. Places like the FKKs in Germany in fucking Barcelona, and I don't believe they have them. They have like brothels and shit like that, but not these places where you go and it's like fucking uh, fifty thousand square meters, and, and there's bars and jacuzzis, and everybody's hanging out naked. All the girls are naked, like all the guys are in like their bathrobes and shit. I've never seen that anywhere in the world. Except I've never for been inside one. I have to say, and but I, I know in the Netherlands it's the same, and like especially if we're talking about red light district, it's like way, way, way harder. Cause this FKK thing, of course there are these clubs, but it's also just like beaches and everything where you have like one part of a beach that is like completely normal. And then one part of the beach where everyone is just like naked. Nah, you know, especially those, like those nudist beaches, they have them, they have them all, all the way. Yeah. You got those oh. ball sacks, hot, hat, yeah. just ball sacks all the way down to the fucking knees and shit. You don't want to get in there, man. Like that's uh, I've, I've seen stuff in Barcelona that I'd rather would not have seen just because yeah. I was walking like with friends of mine at the W and I was like, Oh fuck. Uh, like yeah. people getting up and you just look like instinctly 
like you, you just look, you know, like the, the scenery and everything. Then there is like a fucking 70 year old guy a with saggy ball uh, sack just hanging around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. But anyway, like it's bad telling you, man, it must be in your culture. Somehow you're not providing a good answer for me here, but like it's it's your culture. It's some something that makes you guys like really open to this sexual thing. It's not a taboo at all. Somehow Maybe. sex. Yeah. You know, it's like. For me, maybe it's because it's such a taboo here. This is why it's it, it seems just so open in Germany. But that's the, you know, it's just my thing. I, I, I've i always because, by the way, how I got into it is uh, my Chinese partners produced this fucking incredible machine, which is called the sex machine, you know? And no it's this, fucking way. Oh, uh, man. Ask your friend Nick Shack. I, I sent him one uh, a while back. But you know, you're it, shitting me. I'm not shitting you, man. It is this big ass machine that's made out of like solid metal. That's uh, like it's like a fucking uh, jackhammer, man. It goes like bang, 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 bang. You put like, <coughs> and, and you put like different fucking, uh, you know, it's got all these different uh, endings to it. And if I show you oh fuck, I, I wish I could show it to you. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me get the guys to get it. Vanka, no fucking can you way. check if we can get that biggest fucking black Zilla dildo somewhere in the storage? <laughs> I want to show that to Jim, man. It's got to be somewhere in the storage. That, that's the dude. Like, I see this and I'm like, where does that fucking thing go? You know, like, because I look at it, it's, it's bigger than my fucking forearm. It's like huge, man. And that is one of the fucking, you know, accessories that go with that fucking machine, bro. There's one of the accessories is a fucking bottle. It's like a beer bottle, but plastic. So it doesn't break in you. So people are fucking crazy. crazy. Yeah. And the reason I'm telling this whole story is that my Chinese partners, whenever they came to Europe, they made me go to a few of those shows. They're always in Germany, as you can imagine. You know, they're, they're always in somewhere in Germany, all these sex shows where they have all these, uh, all these, it's like affiliate world, but for like, sex and sex dildos, accessories yeah. dildos and shit oh like that so yeah the, the bro like the things that i've seen there like we're talking about like um we've been talking about here about those sex dolls that they, they make right now the silicone dolls they have like actual skeletons inside so you can you know modify them to stand in whatever pose you want them to stand in and they're like they're you know they're they're like realistic they're like real people whatever you order one it, it comes in a box that's like a fucking coffin you know it's like you receive it at your house you open up the coffin and there's like a a silicone girl waiting for you but at those fucking shows they actually have like mermaids man can you imagine how crazy people are if they want to have like a mermaid to have sex with it's it's crazy but anyway, yeah, while the guys are looking for that, uh, for that. Uh, I mean, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Go on. What is here's it? Here's the thing. There's here's something the good thing. coming, man. So, I, I can, I can, I can see you filtering it in your head, man. Like, just put it out. I, I have to talk my way out of it because I was born and raised in Germany, but I have two citizenships because my mom is Algerian. So... I have to say that Germany is weird and I moved away from Germany. I gave away my German residency oh, literally did, on the back. You? Listen, I'll, I'll show you my ID right now. Let me pick it. <laughs> Go get it, man. Fuck. So on the ID, let me see if I can, I can show it. Uh, there we go. So on the back of my ID, it says like there's a sticker on top. Right? Yeah, you see, it? see it. Yeah, see it. It says no apartment in Germany, no residency in Germany. I gave that shit away. I'm not tax liable anymore. I don't have anything that's holding me in Germany. Hey, last year I was like, fuck it. I, I want to get away. I don't have anything <laughs> to do with these dildos and taxes and all that shit. <laughs> German culture is sometimes is, I'm not saying it's weird, but if you take a look at Berlin, it's very diverse. And I think it because is. of this diversity and especially because Germany is such a, huge nation when it comes to export and sales and and, and, and trades and everything it, i think this is the justification i have to say because germans always find a way on on how to make money and i'm going to give you an example now let me pick something else um 
my oh. passport. Hold I gave on. my passport hold on, away hold on, when I came the first for... time to Bali. All right. Uh, because I have to get the visas. So whenever I give them my passport, um, I just got a new passport in, no when was it? December, November. So I gave them my passport and they gave it back to me with fucking dog bite marks. I'm not shitting you. Like, do you what see that sticker? Hell? Like, it doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like here, you can see the bites. <laughs> And like on the back here, uh, the, yeah, I see it, I see it, I see it. You and I'm, see it. and I'm crazy. like, I'm like, bro, like, the fuck did you do to my passport? <laughs> I just got it new. I just got it express. I paid like 150 euros for it. Like, I'm not gonna fucking pay for my visa extension. You're gonna pay me the money for the passport. Fucking you know, crazy. And like, like the guy ended up coming immediately. Like after what? Like after 10 minutes, I complained, gave me all my money back for the extension. And then the next day, the guy came back and gave me like three mil or something, which is like what? Let me look it up how much it is. Three mil of what? Uh, three mil rupiah. So he gave me like oh. 200 US. All so right. in total, they gave me like what? Two, 280, 300 or something. Right. So like whenever there's something, I'm always trying to, to find a way to make money and not, not for the sake of making money. Like that wasn't the, you know, but it's yeah. like, bro, I'm not giving you my fucking precious passport, <laughs> which is holy to me, which is new, like brand new. Imagine you get a freaking Lamborghini, you give it to a friend and like he gives it, he gives it back to you without with, fuel. And with, like, dog, bro, with, with dog fucking bite marks on it. <laughs> bro, like, I, like Crazy. I was like, like, what the fuck did they do? Like, did they give it to dogs and like, let them play with it or like. <laughs> like oh, this guy's pastor let's give it to our dog like we don't have balls or whatever bro i don't fucking know but like this island is crazy i'm telling you crazy shit all right so let's go a little bit into like uh, what you do as a business that's interesting to me because to be honest with you we've known each other for a while now i mean we've seen each other at events and shit like that but like i know that you do this agency that you do the Facebook ads thing, but you know, I, I know quite a few people like that. So I really want to get like what you actually do. Like what's the milking cow? What's your core business that you do right now? Is it the Facebook agency or what is the money cow with you? Yeah. So uh, many, many different things. I'm going to briefly list all of them. First of all, not a Facebook agency, but a Google agency. We do everything. Google search shopping, YouTube display discovery. Uh, we're managing around 18 million a month right now and we're taking percentage on ad spend. So that's like the main cash cow. Okay. Over, over what, like by now, 328 million in spend lifetime, which is freaking great. We have good clients. We have VC clients who just want us to spend money and not burn money, but as long as we hit the KPIs and the ads manager and, and, and post-purchase survey, they're good because they just want to show the VCs and, and anyone who's invested that they're growing. Right. So I've, I'm actually working with a few companies who are burning one or two million a month, which is like nothing for them. And and I think from, from a brand owner perspective, I think it's fucking stupid because of course you want to grow, but like, like if you're just trying to make an exit, okay, like that's fine. You know, you're, you're going to sell and you know, cause I'm not saying VCs don't want to see profitable growth, but like if you're profitable, they want to see growth beyond German everything VCs, else. Yeah. 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 They're like, Oh, well, if your attention is too high, fuck that. If, if you, you know, like if you're profitable, put more money into acquiring customers, like grow the freaking business, get like the valuation up, get your money's up, get the employees up, grow it even more, like, like, like discover new channels and everything. So that's like the first thing uh, we do. 23 in the team overall with my EA, whatever, count of 24. Um, I run three different brands, one dropshipping store right now. Dropshipping scene is super toxic, uh, as you might know, because everyone is ripping each other's shit. So I stopped yeah. like really being public with that because they, they see something, they rip it, they clone it. Uh, I've had fake DMCAs because I put my stuff online. Um, I've had four exits before. One of them, super funny story. I was running a store with three other friends and I've not seen any one of them before as well. And we wow. sold the entire brand. We sold the entire brand after three months for like a, a mid five figure sum. And like okay. the store revenue was going down. So nothing was happening. But like we, we exited and it was like freaking funny. It was not like this big ass exit, but like imagine you run something for three months and fucking sell it. Like, yeah, bro, come on. It's, especially with guys that you don't know and you haven't actually seen. Well, you might know them, but you haven't seen them. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. Two of them, I've, I've seen them by now. But uh, so there's like two things I'm doing. So one thing, uh, Google Ads Agency. Second thing, e-com. Third thing, uh, info product. 
So uh, maybe to come back to the question initially that you've had, how I'm managing my team. So agency, full in Germany, then uh, info, my business partners in Edmonton in Canada. And like his brother is basically living with him and he's the sales manager and he's managing all the other sales guys and they're in the US getting paid on commission. So he's like, and this is why it's so important to make sure that everyone has their own responsibilities, right? So he's making sure that everything on the sales side is running smooth, appointment setters also in the US and everything. So that's taken care of. And I take care of like media buying on the Google side of things, sometimes Facebook, mapping out everything, projects, operations and everything. But uh, yeah, show me the machine. Yeah, the machine is here, man. It doesn't have any of the... Have you got any of those? All right, let me let me let me show him the what the whole thing looks like because right now oh it's like oh my god oh oh hold on no that's not it we need the the actual do we have the actual uh dildo somewhere that goes on the end or is it not there is it that no nah, it would have been in one of the boxes like one of the boxes had the dildos in it it's not in there. Ah, shit. All right. I'll, I'll just show you. Hold on, because it's super, it's super fucking heavy, bro. It's like, what the fuck? Oh, fuck. Hold on. All right. Oh, okay. What oh, the fuck? Let me get the, let me get the microphone out of the way, man. Bro, this that is... looks like a freaking drill. You put oh. in a wall to punch it. Hold on. You can't even lift it. It's like, oh, there we go. Okay. So this thing oh no no no! i don't need that i'm not gonna go in. i'm not gonna plug it in because it's gonna move the whole fucking table but this is where you actually put the dildo on top and like the dildo comes <laughs> up to here and then this is the actual mechanism where it has to be heavy bro you can't like the, the idea is that that machine fucks you and it's like uh it's gotta have a very stable you know a, ve a very stable uh base so it doesn't move around you know it's not like a dildo one of those dildos that you just slap on a uh, on the tiles in your bathroom and you fucking go with it this is a the so, real fucking deal so okay so i have a question what is your exact affiliation because you said business partner in china like are yes. you manufacturing it are you using it like what no. the fuck are you doing well uh i can't you know i haven't tried using it yet uh i haven't been under the rainbow you know, and here we say you got to go under the rainbow in order to start, uh, you know, having cravings for uh, that you have to satisfy with a machine like this. But, uh, you know, I, I haven't been into this particular brand with them. They were they, at the beginning. They were my sourcing agents. And that's how we started working together. Uh, we had a few brands throughout the time. But this Highsmith is their own product. Right now, they're doing like their sales are between uh, 4.5 and 5 mil a year of this particular You're shitting machine. Me. Yes. Uh, the customers are from all over the world. And a very interesting uh, observation, interesting fact is that most like, of them are in Germany. No, 80% <laughs> are men. 80% of the people that buy this machine are men. Now, no you know, way. we can we can we can try and sort of say that they're buying this for their, you know, uh, for the pleasure of their girlfriends or whatever. But I don't believe that. Yeah. I mean, it's I think it's uh, it's for their own pleasure. But anyways, this is it is what it how, is. How do they deal with refunds? <laughs> uh, not sure. man. I mean, uh, I, I'm not I'm not gotten that deep. In, uh, let's just say that into the business. Fair enough. But anyway, it's Fair it's enough. a it's a crazy business. It's going crazy well. They're they're like updating and optimizing these machines all the time, uh, and it's crazy, bro. Like I never thought that this is actually gonna take off. You know, like I, I would say that like the product is like you know a dildo that vibrates is something that you can hide in your bag. How the fuck do you hide this? This is like a a sports training machine that you have to have in your bedroom somewhere. It's like a, having a treadmill. In the middle of the bedroom, or like a, a, a you know, like one of those uh, static bikes or some shit like that. But anyway, it's fucking selling great. They're actually working on a travel version of this now that you can get in your bag and and travel with it. It's crazy, bro. But yeah, it is. It is a crazy business. What can I say? Imagine the customs are catching you with this, and you have to explain this machine to them. Oh no, no, bro. The machine 
you know, machine, you may have fucking explained somehow, but the, you know, the, the, the fucking things that go with it, like the, the actual, uh, dildos that you put on the end. Like I told you, the sizes of some of those are, wow. I don't know how you explain Fun facts. Fun fun fact. fact, uh, sex toys in Indonesia are illegal and they are they get you killed? Yes. What? Okay. Here's my experience with Indonesia. The first thing, uh, first thing that I was like, what the fuck? This is a crazy country. I was in, uh, in Germany in, in December and I flew out the first time. Right. Okay. So I flew from Frankfurt to Frankfurt, Dubai, Dubai, Jakarta. Okay. Because I had to quarantine for like nine nights or something because they raised it one week before from three to six to six to nine. Anyway, I stayed like nine nights in quarantine. Horrible time. One of the worst times of my life. Um, and then I flew from Jakarta to do uh, not to buy from Jakarta to Bali. One and a half hour flight. Whatever. You know, usually there is like this announcement, right? Oh, please uh, read the safety instructions. Make sure you put your seatbelt on. And then they say, the possession of drugs is illegal and you will get killed. <laughs> like, like you it's, get like killed. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're killed immediately. Like, Okay, recently there was a raid at a restaurant called Mason and there were like 50, 50 policemen or something. It's like a casual restaurant, you know, and there's like a nightclub behind. And, bro, here's the thing. You can buy ketamine in the pharmacy. You can buy ketamine from other people where there's like an uprise. You can buy ketamine from like other people. There is like something called Tokopedia, which is like Amazon. You can buy ketamine there, but no one does that because it's freaking stupid. But... Of course, like the price for one one bottle is like 1.1 mil and, and the price from like another person is 1.7. So like the question is, wh why exactly is there such a huge difference? Why is it almost like what, 70% more? I can tell you why, because there's someone in the middle who's hush hush, you know, let me just put it that way. Okay. And uh, they raided the entire place and they took piss tests from everyone and and like there were people positive on cocaine and they were like okay well 10k or you will get in jail right now so uh oh my god it's crazy yeah and this is how they make uh, money sometimes i have a wow. friend uh, not a friend more like more like an acquaintance let me put it that way um he's from nepal his dad is a policeman his dad has what seven million in the bank or something Okay. I don't know the exact number, three, five, seven or something. You want to tell me like a regular policeman in a third world country like Nepal can make seven million without doing shady shit? Like, uh, come on. Bro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, man. Of course. I'm sure that shit happens there. But hold on. How the fuck can sex toys kill you in Indonesia? How can you get killed for sex toys? How are, how are they? Indonesia so is a Muslim country. It's a Muslim country. So it's like very, very strict. Is it a Muslim country? Actually, uh... I don't, I don't know. I think it's a, a Buddhist country. Uh, what I don't know. Ma Malaysia is a fucking, uh, I think Malaysia is a, is a Muslim country. I'm yeah, not sure about. Yeah. Yeah. Indonesia as well. So like 87.2% Muslims. So I wasn't okay. too wrong. I think Bali has a lot of Buddhists. Uh, just making, <laughs> making sure my facts uh, are, are right. Uh, yeah, majority of, of Indonesia is Muslim, but Bali is like very, very strong Hindu and, and Buddhist. Um, yeah, hence why everybody goes to Bali and nobody really cares about the rest of Indonesia. I mean, at least I from mean, my friends, you know, nobody fucking travels to Indonesia. Everybody's in Bali. It, it, it almost sounds like a different country, you know, like everybody knows that Bali is yeah, Indonesia, yeah. but, you know, whenever you say Bali, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we know that. Yeah, it's kind of like Dubai. Everyone knows Dubai is Dubai, but no one says, "Oh, I'm flying to the UAE." Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Because it's like a, it's a country within the country. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So, hold on. How old are you, man? Twenty-four. What about you? Twenty-four, man. Fucking at twenty-four, you've done so much shit already, bro. Whenever I was, was fucking twenty-four, I was just chasing. Pussy and fucking slinging dope and shit like that. You know, I, I didn't know about like selling brands and fucking working with people that I'd never seen and and traveling and living in fucking the other end of the fucking world. Dude, this is this this digital fucking era is providing so many opportunities to young people, man. Like, fuck, I love it.
I love it's, it. It's Seriously, crazy. I'm yeah, forty. I'm, I'm I'm forty two, man. I'm I'm the mirror age of yours. You're two four. I'm four. I was about like, to say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like I am. Uh, I'm fucking way past uh, way past those years. But trust me, man. Whenever I was fucking twenty four, I was doing only crazy shit. Only crazy shit. Nothing. No. No. No legal business. Nothing like that. I've been through so many bullshit fucking ideas and things that I've went through. But yeah, it's crazy that uh, you know we get to meet at these events and like here you are at the start of your career and here I am. You know, I'm not gonna say declining or anything like that, but still, I <laughs> fucking lived almost twice as you, man. I can be a fucking dad for God's sake. I mean, you'd you'd be very early on if you were. Yeah, dad, it's like uh, hey, <laughs> 18, 18. I was fucking banging like a donkey at fucking eighteen, bro. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> you know? Fuck. You don't know. I mean, so know. was I, but like, you gotta wrap the willy, bro. I'm telling that's you. That's it. That's it. That's it. You don't want to. In, yeah, in yeah, Bali, yeah, yeah. you can you can catch shit. I'm telling you, like, because everyone right. is just like mainly just tourists, right? And everyone just wants to bang and fuck and whatever. Have and fun. Like, yeah, exactly. Like they know they're gonna be there for like what two weeks, four weeks, whatever. And like, bro, like honestly, like, what are the chances if you meet a girl? in a foreign country on a vacation that you're going to end up marrying her. I'm not going to say the chances are, no, I'm slim. not going to say they're the chances slim. are, yeah, slimmer than just fucking and dipping pretty yeah. much. All right. But hold on. Like, uh, there's a lot of like, from what I've heard from like friends of mine and shit, there's like a, a huge communities of, of people like yourself, like people that, that are, I've got my, uh, my good friend from the Netherlands, uh, Josh Katz, who also, you know, lives in, in Bali, like spends months in Bali. Anyway, I wouldn't say like lives in Bali, but he's got the similar setup to you. Like uh, he's got the Dubai citizenship, lives in Bali, travels up and down the world, you know, and it's, uh, you know, I, I know that Bali is like a, a really hot spot for for people that just, you know, stay there for, for months upon months. Like they're not there just as tourists for two weeks. It's just like a, a place for a little bit more than that. So is there a lot of people that you meet there that are like, like yourself, like young entrepreneurs that, that are just spending time there and, you know, working on their digital businesses and shit like that. It's a proper hub for that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you always meet new people, but I, I already have my circle and everything. And I think I have a WhatsApp group and they're like, they used to be like 110 people, but then it was more like an e-com group, which I didn't really want. So I just, kicked out more than half of them because i'm like like bro guys this is like group for bali and not like for discussing ecom like you can you, sure you can discuss ecom but it's not like i want you to invite other people just to chat about ecom like whatever yeah, yeah, just yeah. send them a message or make another group but like whenever i'm traveling somewhere and there's like a tiny hack i always create a whatsapp group so whenever you're back in that respect place you can be like the chances are slim but like oh yeah i'm in barcelona who's in barcelona because you're always getting to meet new people and then you can always sync and everything but like I have my circle, I had my circle before, and then I just met more and more and more and more and more people just from the, because I knew like one person in Bali, I think, friend of mine. And then like, I got to meet more and more and more people. And I brought them to, bro, I brought like 10 people to, or, or 12 people to geek out Dubai. And like, everyone was going to Dubai when I left. And I was like, yeah, boy, let's fucking go. Like I wasn't the same plane with like four other people or something. Uh, so yeah, like it's, it's definitely a great place to network. It's definitely a great place to meet other people. Um, but I'm not really proactive about going to a co-working space or, or going to events just, or something. Just to find new people, yeah. Nah, I'd, I'd rather focus on, on my own shit because I know what I have to do. I know what the next steps are. I'm very, very clear on what I have to do next. And I have my work set up here. I have my desk here. I have my stand-up desk here. I have a monitor here. Uh, still working on, on the rest because it's like very rudimentary, I'd say. Like very rough. Uh, but it works and that's all that matters. Like I can get a lot of shit done. I can be productive here. And this is like, you know, people think, oh, you're in Bali, you're just doing vacation. No, I can fucking work. I'm gonna set up here. It's not like I'm just chilling the entire day at the beach. Like, of course, if I wanted to, I can drive down to the beach in five minutes. But like, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm just living my normal life here. Just because I'm in Bali, there's like no real difference as opposed to being in Germany, only that I'm just having a better quality of life, better food, better everything. And just like everything faster and better. So. So, so what's your, like, do you, are you renting like a villa by yourself or are you renting a villa with a few friends or how is like, how's your sort of living yeah. setup? 
yeah, we're we're in a place with a few friends. Uh, I could show you around, but it's already a bit dark. Uh, I'll send you a video later on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can put that on. A, yeah, it's a super nice place. Like there's like land in front of us. So we're in the middle of Changu, uh-huh. uh, right next. I'm not gonna say where actually, because uh, like I've I've gotten pictures of myself on Instagram. Like oh, I I I saw you and shit, and like not only once from people I don't know. So that's kind of creepy. Um, anyways, live in Changu um in a villa and my friend has been living in this villa for like what one and a half years or something uh-huh. um and you know it's it's not like people come in and come out it's like they are we're like four people in total it's a super nice villa we have four staff five staff we have security we have maids we have everything so like that's so cool let's say man. i it's that's fucking so cool. sick because i get up that's so cool i get i i go out let's say i want to get breakfast because like usually i don't eat until like one or two p.m but let's say I was about to go out somewhere, get breakfast. They come into my room. They make my bed. They put like these water bottles next to my bed and everything. And I'm like freaking sorted. They do my toilet paper. They do cleaning. They do everything. Like It's just like living like in a hotel. You're, 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 you're living Pretty in a Pretty much. Hotel. Like a like, fucking service villa. Do you, have, thing. do you have, I heard like a, a lot of the people that I know actually get like chefs and shit to their villas so they they get like they cook breakfast for them lunches dinners do you get that or do you just go and get it outside so we have maids and they can cook we have like what two or three two i think so we have two security we have so like 24 7 security on, they're always whatever, at the door what, whatever you say secure do you need that in bali like i've never heard anybody like complaining that they got like uh mugged or Catch no, 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 no. Or attacked. What do you need that? Or is it just a, no, no. You know, a thing? It's no, it's not that criminality here is high or something, but it's more like we're not. Yeah. I'm, so I'm not I'm not gonna say I've had like so you just got situation you just got two guys chasing me. You just got two guys to high five on your way in the fucking house. Yeah, what's up, Jamal or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. I, <laughs> I mean, it's it's like literally 24-7 sometimes. Um, like fucking hilarious. Like sometimes I go uh, to the kitchen and the staff is just chilling on the couch. And like, of course, like they're they're not 24-7 awake. Like sometimes yeah. they're sleeping because like it's fucking security. Of course, I'm not. I, I'm not trying to have someone awake for like 24 hours a day. Like they need to rest and everything. They pretty much live in our villa and they have like their own small house and, and everything and toilets, bathrooms and rooms and everything they can stay in and chill. Um, but like, bro, sometimes like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., if I have like a long, long night, I'm still working, going to the kitchen, grabbing water. <laughs> bro, this guy fucking sleeps there and everything. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> We've had parties that ended at our place. We went to a club and then went to our place, bro. Like, We've had people fall asleep in our place and like, and, and like our security had to get them out and shit. It's like oh, wild, shit. bro. Wow. Yeah. So do, do you do that a lot? Like, is there a lot of house parties there or is that just something that happens occasionally? Not very occasionally. So very rarely, like house parties do happen. Mm-hmm. And like, of course I'm working, but I'm also living life. I'm not going to say I'm working 80 hours a week right now. That's not the case. Probably working like 60, maybe a bit more, but like right now I'm, I'm saying no to partying the entire time. I haven't been to a club since been a few weeks. I think Barcelona actually. Whoa. Why so ever is that? since I'm back, why is I don't know, that? I'm working. I'm I'm keeping my head down. Like I'm, it's not like, it's not like I don't want to party. Like, shit, man. It's, times it's, times it's, it's are more fucking, so like I just want to focus. You times know, times are times it's like are an important changing. Phase. Times are fucking changing, bro. I'll tell you that, bro. Much. It's about like, to be whatever. Q4. Whatever I was fucking twenty four. You tell me you gotta work and not fucking party. Oh my god, man. Wow. But. It's not like I'm I'm not partying, like I'm partying, but like I'm not going to a club right now. So whenever a friend invites me over or a friend of my friend and we, we go there, okay, we stay there, we maybe get a few drinks, we do whatever, uh, and then we go home. It's not like we're partying right now up until 4 a.m., 6 a.m. or something. Like, Dude, don't we do that, me- of course. You know, we do that, but like yeah. not right now. But don't get me wrong, man. I'm just uh, I'm just envious because I couldn't say no. You know, I wish that I had the fucking power and balls to say no and get my head down i would have been 
way further than I am right now. And I, I fucking I, I wish that we can have a time machine to see where you get to in fucking 20 years, man. I'm sure that you're going to be like fucking way past to what I ever managed to achieve. But that's just because me and I and not being able to say fucking no to parties, man. This is my fucking problem. By the way, whatever you were saying that you have these uh, the, the WhatsApp group and shit that you get to wherever you're going. Like for all these events, we make up these WhatsApp groups. But what ends up happening is like we're always the same people in the WhatsApp group. You know, we just have like different names. <laughs> Maor. It's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> affiliate World Dubai. Maor, Jason, John, you know, like Tebow, like the, the same fucking the same fucking crew is just a different group with a different name. So I was like, guys, let's just fucking, let's just keep the fucking group. And, 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 you know, like whatever we do it, it's always us. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy bro i mean it's very similar for us because it's like our groups are a bit bigger they're like 50 60 70 people sometimes right but it's still like the, the core people like the core 10 15 are still the same and then there's like new people you meet at events and like new people who are friends of friends who are, who are currently there and then friends who who aren't entrepreneurs who live there so it's like it makes yeah, that's... like the non-entrepreneur is like very low yeah that's how you widen that's how you widen the network but dude, I'm, I'm really, I really love, I really love what, uh, what you're doing there. And I wish that, you know, these things were happening whenever I was fucking 24, man, you know, like that would, it just puts your life in a, in a different perspective, you know? Uh, Definitely. but that's it. It's, it's always, I, I feel like the fucking granddad now talking to, you know, a, a young dude saying, Hey man, well, if you know what it was back in our fucking time and shit like that, but you know, it's not that fucking different. <laughs> But hey, yeah. All right. So uh what else do I want to ask you? Like, so you don't fucking maybe fuck. maybe let's head back to the business part real quick so we can okay. wrap up on that. All and right. And you can think of something new. Let's do that. Um so we talked about the Google Ads agency. We talked about info, um basically running tripwire funnel, a high ticket funnel for a high ticket program, e com how to make money online, drop shipping basically, but like teaching hard marketing fundamentals like response. Um so you've been to Dubai as well. So you've met Carl. I have equity in Carl's company. Uh, All right. And I joined the company in January. So I helped him to get the slot and everything. And like, ever since I joined that company, it grew like 10x and MRR. And like, ever since it's it's growing, like double, gi double digit percentage wise, month on month on month, which is amazing. Nice. Uh, so within this, within this CRO company, let me just check Slack. And then I can tell you how many people we are. We are uh, 25 people right now there, which is uh, not bad for a company that really just started in January. Um, and they're all getting good money. So that's uh, that's four with e-com. Uh, I run some affiliate offers, just like e-com, search ads, US and Germany okay. mainly. Oh, very, by the way, automated, by the way, by passive. the way, I can use you for one of our, uh, we just launched a new car care brand in Germany, man. And you're, you're fucking native of that shit. I should, uh, I should hit you up after this about it. See what we can do together. We're using, uh, you know, Michael Brenner and their crew. Uh, they were yes, in, they I were think, in, I think we're actually doing CRO for one of his brands, but I'm uh, not too sure. Maybe. It's uh, he's got the primal harvest. That's yeah, uh, we're doing that one. Is that what? Yeah, we're running, we're actually running their Amazon, and uh, we're Sick. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're I guess we're colleagues in that, yeah, <laughs> in, 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 indirectly. We're working for the success of a, of a you know, of one brand, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, we've been uh, we've been we launched this brand six weeks ago with one SKU just in germany we are running it through the dfo affiliate network and we are already at 160k turnover that's like for six weeks for a brand that was literally non-existent you know nobody knows about it nothing it's just like so i don't know i don't know how we're doing this is the first affiliate thing that we're running you tell me how's that is that good is it bad is it well it depends on the profit margin if it's above like, like what is it like 10 20 percent above with with fucking affiliate marketing man it's non-existent it's like we're fucking breaking even but we're building uh we're just like we're using it because we get the spillover for amazon which which 
that's where we actually get like a, a little bit of a return. And then from mm -hmm. like the, the retargeting and the email, that's where we get some money back. But from the affiliates, sort of uh, the CPA is so high that we're basically breaking even with this shit. You know, it's like maybe we do a little bit of profit, but it's it's what well, it's fucking two, three percent. It's like super low. It's not even worth mentioning, you know. What is what is the CPA that you currently have? Just out of curiosity, uh, forty bucks. We're paying them forty bucks per product, and you okay. know all this is going to change because we're working on like some upsells and shit like that. We just started with the the single SKU. It's the only upsells it actually has is like a, a three pack of the same product, and like the way I am thinking about it is like if people don't know the product haven't tested it they're more you know less likely to go for a like three pack deal just because they're going to get a better price on it they're, they're going to want to test the product but to be honest we, we we do get a lot of people going for the three pack you know like probably 60 65 percent are going for like the biggest package that we are offering them right now and we're making yeah. on on that three pack we're making something like let's say like uh 10 euro profit or something like that per pack that's cut that, that costs enough. it costs like 70 euro so we get the 40 uh 40 bucks that we need to give dfo then we got the cogs the fucking shipping blah 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 and then we got 10 bucks on the end but because we have the on the lowest one whatever people just buy a single sku they're we're actually losing 10 bucks so you know that's basically you know evening out the what scales. are your what are your cogs for the product? Cogs are not cogs are not an issue. Cogs are like I don't know, like three or four bucks. You know, it's 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 not. Okay, something and you're selling. Good. How much are you selling for? Well, the 40? single the single product is like thirty eight. 38.5 okay. because we still have to stay like within the the market standards you know because it's 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 a product that, you know there's there's uh, other products of that price range. So yeah. I was just wanting to get your opinion because, you know, as I said, we, we don't have a lot of experience. We are, as you know, we are very Amazon focused. I've launched a yep. lot of a lot of Amazon focused brands like Amazon native brands that we never took out of Amazon. They only stayed. We never had like uh, separate like uh, funnels or uh, Shopify stores for them. We just launched them and built them up in Amazon, which was very stupid. I've already done a few fucking podcasts on that, you know, but this is what we knew and this is how we did it. And, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've gotten my lessons from that. So this is why we wanted to do this brand the other way around. So, so yeah, it's, I mean, it's interesting because I'm working as affiliate and not like brand owner doing affiliate. Like, of course we monetize with uh, social snowball. I don't know if you've heard of it from Noah Tucker. Right. Uh, it's kind of like an affiliate system where you, have a purchase and then you're like oh like hey like send it to your friends and you can make some money you can make some commission right so this is like all the affiliate that we're doing for our stuff but if we're talking about affiliate um i have a good offer because i'm not funding the ad spend. i'm not doing the landers or anything and they're providing everything and the checkout is converting at like almost 10 percent, which is right. like crazy so i have very good margins i have very low cpas i have my my goals and everything of course the tracking is not always 100 percent but I know for sure that that affiliate network is not cutting because uh, like pretty much every other affiliate network, um, I haven't worked with DFO. I only know good things about Jordan. Yeah. Uh, he gave me a nice compliment in Miami at Geek Out after my talk. I was like, I want to give a huge shout out to Jim. I learned something. I'm like, oh, Jordan. Uh, Jordan, say I, some I felt, more, man. Say yeah, some I, more. I, no, I, I felt very honored because I was like, wow, like that's, nah, nah, that's Jordan, nice to hear from such dude, a guy, bro. Jordan is an OG. Like Jordan's one of the OGs in that exactly. fucking business, man. Like he's been around for a while. Oh. Yeah. So, so what what'd you call this? Standpoint, snow, snow what? Social snowball. Oh, social snowball. Let me check this out yeah. after our call here. So, social snowball. As far as I know, it's only for Shopify stores um we are running a great. shopify store that's where our thing is so maybe we give it yeah, a yeah, shot yeah. see how it works but like okay let's let's talk about the revenue revenue 160k um yeah. not bad for the first month it depends on on pretty much Sorry. all the investments and everything i wouldn't say it's bad i wouldn't say it's it's amazing because like we've 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 taken shit like i don't want to brag but we've taken shit from zero to a mil in the first month and like right. done 100k days in like after like two weeks um but it's a very, very great start. Like the question isn't, this is where I don't really have experience on 
because I'm running as an affiliate. I have my fixed commission, everything. I just need to stay below the CPA. So right. what I'm doing is just optimizing, optimizing, optimizing. But for you, it's a different thing because you are giving out the, like you're paying them out, right? Yeah, so it's exactly. like, it's it's like you you can't improve the margins on there because it's like either you make profit if they buy the three pack or you get fucked if they buy the one pack. So um, I don't know. You it's should crazy. probably do some, do some split testing, A-B testing. This is what I'm thinking well, in regards to the price. And then test like some angles to like really differentiate because one example, for example, is the dog bed. Do you know the dog bed? Of course, everyone knows the dog bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there are two different variants, one with a zipper, one without a zipper. With a zipper, you can turn it around, wash it in, in the washing machine and everything. Um, and the other, you, you can't really do it, right? Um, and this variant is like 20 to 30% more expensive, I think. Um, and there's like huge differences within that product, right? So like just a simple change in terms of product development or even just finding another angle that might be a pain point might be able to raise your price and, and justify that respective change. So th this is like what I'm thinking. This, this is what I potentially would do. You can keep the commission the same, but maybe like change the change your offer on the landing page. Just my yeah, what's uh, what's uh, what I'm gonna try and do here is like uh, I'm gonna try to play around with a few upsells that are gonna be like very well connected with the with the current product. But hold on, I'll I'll uh, I'll pick your brain on that a little bit more. I'll send you the I'll send you the the link to our landing page, and I'll I would want to really get your opinion on it because I think you the problem is that it's for Germany, it's all in German, so I can't really send it to my American friends. So now that you know, I never thought to uh, you know because I. I I've never thought about you as a German dude, you know, like I, I know you are from Germany, but because we always speak in English, it's like, uh, and you don't have that German accent. So <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know why, but like all of my German friends, bro, they all have such a heavy German accent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I'm, that's I'm, I'm why not, that's I'm why make fun of them, but it's like all the Germans have such a German heavy accent. Right. And for <laughs> me, it's like, Maybe I'm a natural. Maybe I'm good with with languages because I speak a few. I think it's that. But like I've, I've been speaking English all my life. For right? sure, I, bro. And I, and I'm talking way more English than German every single day, right? I have more calls in English than I. There's so little calls in German, bro. I have like maybe three, four calls a week in German. It's like, dude, I I, I live in Bulgaria, and you know, like even in the office, most of the time we communicate in English because we've got people from, uh, you know, other countries that, that work for us and that we work together on different projects and like English, I read in English, you know, you watch, it's all like, it's all connected. Netflix, blah, 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 the whole thing, everything's yeah. in English. So, so for me, it's difficult to speak in fucking Bulgarian, even if, you know, even <laughs> given the fact that I live here and I, I talk Bulgarian with my wife and kids and all that shit, it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, English is just so aggressive in, in taking over your, uh, your everyday life, you know, especially whatever you're yeah. a little bit more international. You're not like, uh, uh, stay in your country, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> all right. So, should I hit you up with them fucking three girls and then, then we play this? Oh, uh, this, uh, the the what's it? Fuck, no, hold on. What what I call it? Mary Bang Fuck and Kill, kill. Mary. Yeah, Mary yeah, yeah. Bang and Kill. Yeah, all right. let's do it. You ready for this? Well, usually, usually the easy way to fucking play this is you give the three names and then you're like, oh, I'll marry this one, I'll bank this one, I'll kill this one, you know? So that's no, I that's think easy. this way, I think this way is more interesting. It's gonna that, be more that, fun that's and it, more. Man. All right, all right. We got the first one. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. All right. First one is Adele. Ah, not sure, man. Not sure what else is in the fucking pipeline here for you, man. Like, uh... what are we doing with Adele? <laughs> Oh, uh, dude! Uh, listen, if you shit. if you if you kill her, if you kill her, there's gonna be you know it's gonna be very dramatic, man. Like people fucking love Adele. Like you can't. I know. Kill like I wasn't, I wasn't thinking of fucking uh, of of killing. Here's what I was thinking. Okay. In the oh, beginning, you, you, said, you fucking think of marrying? Oh my god, bro! You're listen, wow. listen, listen. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know my thought process. Before All right. Decision. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That'll be interesting. In the beginning, you said. You know, give him like one good one, two shit ones, two hard ones. So I still have that on top of my head. But here's the thing. 
I can't kill Adele. I'll get canceled for that. <laughs> um, That's for sure, man. I, 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 I was Googling her right now to see what her current, you know, figure is. Because I think she used to be a bit chubby. Chubby. No Whoop. offense. Oh, yeah. Um, Not taken. <laughs> so I'm going to check her Instagram right now. And it's hard to tell, but. Mm. Oh, you're going to. You gonna get Bro, in this there, one is big hard. boy? Yeah. You gotta get in there, big boy. What's what's happening there? Come on. Here's the thing: Do I want to take the risk and just kill her, oh. or or do I want to say I'm gonna fuck her because it's the only like? Is it only gonna be women, or is it also gonna be men? Nah, it's only women. Let me make this easy for you. It's only women, so you're not gonna okay. Fair you're enough. Not, you're not gonna fuck a dude today, but yeah. <laughs> actually never uh <laughs> i think there's gonna be a worse one so i'm gonna say i'm gonna marry adele because i think there's gonna be one worse one and one better one i'm gonna roll with that all right okay so so you're marrying adele let's put the m in here so that's actually pretty good by the way because she's like yeah she'll be loyal and uh and she's know. fucking stacked bro she's oh yeah, yeah rich. dude that's it you fucking cancel all your give your equity away and, and all the shit that you're running right now and just get on a fucking boat and start chilling and going around doing yeah. whatever the fuck you want all right so so you marry the deal okay we're off to girl number two heidi Klum. Oh, fuck uh, she's old i have to kill her <laughs> Uh, we don't know what the next one is, though. Shit, you think she's so? Maybe the next one is the fucking Queen of England, brother. Yeah, you you, you gotta end up banging the Queen, bro. I don't know. I don't oh, know. I don't know. you don't want that. So, okay, let me let me think. Mm. Uh, I see, I see, I can see your monitor in your eyes, man. I, I see you yeah, going I'm, like I'm naked. You're checking naked photos of fucking Heidi Klum, man. Come on, man. Like, no, no, I'm checking the Instagram. Oh my um, god. So, you banging or killing? Here's the thing if I fuck her, can I fuck the daughter too? <laughs> like, she's uh, got the package. I don't, or, uh... I don't know, man. It's just like, it doesn't come, doesn't come in a package like that. Um, Shit. At least you're married to Adele, bro. Like, you can. Man. Here's the thing. So far, the two choices could have been way, way, way worse. That's true. Um, That's true. Maybe the third one isn't that bad as well. You know, maybe it is not the Queen of England. You know, maybe it's uh, somebody else. Who knows? Elizabeth II. Ooh, you know what? Up. I want to be very. I want to be very risk averse and say I'm going to fuck her. Okay. Not a bad choice. Well, you just killed Sandra Bullock, man. It's uh, what can I say? It's uh, not the worst decision that you could have made. It's uh, it's actually being good. But you know, I mean, Haley Klum and Sandra Bullock were both in the same boat sort of you know like so whether you're gonna fuck or kill it's uh it was more or less the same i yeah, think i mean i think you made I think a I better made the choice. perfect choice yeah i think yeah. i think you really fucking nailed those bro like i i think you I really think, nailed yeah. those. i think if i would have had the choice before if i knew all the names this is exactly what i would have done yeah yeah i think i think i think you did it really well i think you did it really well that, that's what i would have done that's what I would have done. That's what I would have done, man. Sort of, yeah. I mean, Adele, you're gonna have all these like romantic nights. You're gonna sing while you're in the shower. It's like, uh, yeah, not it's a bad be... thing, dude. It's fucking amazing. Imagine waking up to her songs, man. Like, I have all these moments. Whatever it rains, I fucking play her whole fucking album, bro. And I'm like soaking <laughs> wet, soaking wet from my fucking tears for driving and the rain outside. It's fucking great, dude. You, you fucking nailed this. All right. It. So, when am I gonna see you? Fucking Bangkok? Is that is that when we're gonna get together? Uh, I, I got a few events, but I don't know. Like, I'm going to Traffic Summit next uh, next month. I'm gonna be talking. Oh no, this month it's already the first. So I'm gonna be talking on the 26th at Traffic Summit. This is in Istanbul. Then I'm going to another event with uh, with Mauer. We're talking in Dubai. It's like some some sort of uh, 
Russian event that wants to go international and like it's Russian Ukrainians, but they're friends and they want to do like an e-com event, something like that. So uh, that's got to be, you know, interesting. That's in Dubai end of uh, 26th of October, I think is when Istanbul. it is. No, no. First is Istanbul. Istanbul is one. No, ah. Istanbul, Istanbul is 27th to the 30th of September. Then we got the yeah. Dubai one, which is, uh, I think it's like, maybe it's 25th to the 30th of October. And then we got uh, Affiliate World in Bangkok. Yeah, when is Affiliate World? It's the 30th of November to the 2nd of December, something like that. Yeah, 30th of November until 1st of December. First, uh, yeah. So I actually, I actually have another conference, which is not conflicting, conflicting, but it almost would have been conflicting. So it's on the 26th until the 27th of November. And then I need to get my ass from. Where's uh, that? Germany, Frankfurt. Oh, I so only... that's where I need to be at that point of time. Mm -hmm. I only go I only go to dildo conferences in Frankfurt, bro. Come on, bro. Dude, they're great. I'll, I'll take you to some of them, man. You're going to have fun, man. You're German, for God's sake. I'm good, bro. I'm good. <laughs> I appreciate the offer, but I'll see you not at a dildo conference. Yo, yo, yo. World but listen, listen, listen. The fucking places that I can take you in Frankfurt can blow your goddamn mind, son. I'll send you a list, dude. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna break the fucking uh, vow of silence here, but I'll send you some links. You th thank me later. You thank me whenever you get to Bangkok. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm, I'm very excited. Are you going to speak in, uh, in Bangkok, by the way? Uh, not sure, man. They haven't confirmed anything to me yet. They're already fucking announcing speakers. They might not. I don't know. Like Sharon hasn't said anything, so we'll see. They they asked me to. Yeah. They asked me to in Barcelona, but then like it's been radio silence since. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I submitted a few things, like a few topics, like three topics and like background, everything, everything I could talk about. Um, so we'll see. Like I've gotten yeah. a follow up email actually this week where it's like where Chad said, "Hey, I think her name is Sh Sharon." Sharon, yeah. Sharon, yeah. So she's supposed to follow up probably this week. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Like I'm I'm gonna be there for sure. Yeah. Um I, even if I don't speak on stage. Um, yeah, if I don't if even if I don't speak, I'll I'll probably I'll probably come because that's like uh that's like where we all get to, you know, get to get together with yeah. the boys and shit. So and Bangkok, yeah. you know, what happens in Bangkok? Stays in Bangkok, yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, you don't want any STDs to follow you. Uh, when are you America. heading to Bali? Uh, not sure yet. Hello? You I there? Yeah. yeah, you cut out yeah. for a second. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about Bali yet, man. I'm, uh, I'm, still making, I'm still making plans for that, so not sure yet. I mean, if you're in Asia, you should definitely consider after going from, uh, from AWC. Uh -huh. so just like a few thoughts. But cool. sick, bro. Was a pleasure being here. Had a good time being on this podcast, the Fat Toro podcast. Thank you very uh, much, man. Thank you very much. It was good having you here. It was good to to hear what I could have been whenever I was fucking 24. You know, I <laughs> I envy you. I envy you. <laughs> I envy you for everything that's uh that's coming, man. You're doing fucking great. Keep on fucking crushing and like Dude, you could be the next fucking Mark Zuckerberg for I for all for all I know. Fuck, you did fucking great, brother. I'll run gem gem book. Gem book. <laughs> all right, your gem account. That's it. <laughs> Thanks see for you, coming in. One. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in one of the uh, in in one of those events for sure. See ya, bro. Have a good one. All right, bro. See ya. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.